Um, exactly the thing that you sent, just those that that sequence of numbers. Hmm. Okay. Swati, you also tried a lot of things. What did you try? Yeah, like Darren, I also first just put the numbers and then it showed. First, I thought it's some geographical location and then pin codes showed up, which didn't make sense. Then I thought because you said at it will be some time. And so I said I started putting time, uh, clock, coding clock, different things. And then some of these binary clocks and things came up, which I read didn't apply here. Hmm. I think uh, uh, if you had searched for time instead of clock, the word clock will take you to clock and representation of time for humans to read because only humans look at clocks, right? Uh, but if you are searching for time and how to show time with large numbers or something like that, I mean, uh, for I, I actually tried to see if it will come up and what I searched for was time written as a large number and then uh, this Unix time thing comes like fourth or fifth in that search search query um, yeah and I think uh, Sue Sreyas had solved it but uh, Sreyas is not in the chat yet Hmm. So, uh, so uh, without wasting time, not that this is time waste, but uh, to focus on what we had uh, planned, I want, hi Ravi, can hear you. Uh, I want someone to create a presentation, but uh, I also want you to share your screen and uh, uh, when you i mean it's not about the presentation it's about uh showing how you save it and how it how it's opened and things like that so if you if you have no problem in showing your computer screen and uh, you know some folders in your computer uh, the 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 uh, i mean if it's safe to browse your computer in a recorded video uh, can you volunteer as a person who will share a screen for this session. I mean, ideally, you could have told in advance, so we could have uh, fashioned up our uh, <laughs> folders, so to speak. Uh, but I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, mm. What kind of what what computer uh, operating yeah, system do you have, Judah? Yeah. Judah? Yeah. Oh, uh, I have Windows ten. Windows. So I think uh, Windows. You 10. have. Uh, you you also are volunteering. So I mean, uh, I guess Judah, if you uh, have not really cleaned up, uh, so oh, let's party. Let's let's party do it. Yeah. What does clean up mean actually? <laughs> I don't know, just because this is going to get recorded, right? So unless, uh, I mean, if there are some sensitive information, like you have a research project with data on it and all that open, um, I, I wouldn't be able to upload that later. Then that would be... Okay, I won't open anything like that. Okay, so can, can you share it? And what, what operating system do you have, Swati? Windows 11. Fine, that should be fine. Uh, can, can you uh, like share it? Oh, I have to give you 
access uh, let me do a press enter uh, can you share your screen now <clears throat> Uh, we do see the browser window um, what what I want is uh, you to create a presentation with what what tool are you planning to use uh, within this uh, like this presentation or in okay a new presentation I'll use slides Google slides Okay, uh, can, can I request you to use a software that runs on your own computer so that uh, we do not have to uh, We can talk about why that, why I request that later, but uh, can you do that? Okay Yeah, so uh, th thanks. You, you can put uh, whatever you want. You can put a couple of pictures or some slides, just random. You're done. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now is the uh, <laughs> the first part of. Uh, I mean, this is this was a bit, of course the first part, but now uh, the thing we wanted to. How do you save this? Where do you save this? Mm, like it will depend on like what category it is so mm -hmm. generally i have a large folder which i've categorized into multiple things inside it mm -hmm. so really for now i just put under Documents. Okay, and what name name did you give? Oh, okay. I didn't notice the name. It was session three. Fine. Session three is fine. So um, you have uh, now saved this computer on your computer, right? I mean, this uh, presentation on your computer, right? Yeah. So where did it get saved? And uh, now, I mean, from now on, I'm just uh, trying to do an interactive session. So uh, anyone uh, feel free to unmute and talk. But uh, I mean, Swati, you can, of course, uh, start talking. Where did it get saved? In, I mean, in the drive inside documents. D drive. So, what is this D drive? D does your computer have uh, uh, 
four five drive so what is a drive a disk partition like back in the days when they used to use i don't know if it still applies but like back back in the days when they used to use the older hard disks interesting uh, uh this uh, swati did you get what that was did, did you understand what darren said no oh then do you want to explain uh, what that is i think it's basically uh, the the physical uh, space that's available in the disk is sort of divided into smaller portions and each portion becomes one space so that uh, i don't know if it like increases the speed for accessing data on those drives uh, that's at least my understanding I, i can't really i mean that's how far i i can and when you say disk what do you mean disk uh, is it a dvd disk or a cd disk? yeah i think the olden the yeah, the older hard disks like not the solid state ones used to have a some sort of a spinning uh i think a magnetic something inside like a disk like an actual disk that spins hmm. so essentially you're talking about uh, the long term storage of any computer the, the or a computing device uh, it it has a hard disk or it used to have something called a hard disk in the past where uh, like a cd drive but much more complicated than a cd drive where you could uh, store information and then even when your computer switches off it comes uh, i mean and switches on again your files are all saved so that that is just a, uh, that is a storage device right uh, it could be uh, these days we have a very fast version called solid state device uh, which uh, similar to usb uh, thumb drives or pen drives uh, uh, we can store and retrieve information now uh, swati uh how many how many uh, hard disk uh, how many uh, solid shed uh, how many storage devices does your computer have any idea um i used to think like this ram and rom are two different kinds of storage i don't know if i it's called devices but interesting so uh, does anyone uh, have any idea about uh, whether these are two devices or two types of storage what what is this ram and rom and what did you say swati the other thing ram and rom that's all so uh, uh, does anyone know what a ram is or what a rom is i'm sure most of you know but uh, i mean just jump in with an answer so that i can go to the next question <laughs> ram means so uh, the access memory and rom means read only memory and i don't know the details and i think so uh, uh ram is it's, uh, it's dependent on the power supply like if the power goes then the memory that's saved on ram it's lost but with the rom it stays uh permanent okay so where did this uh, powerpoint get saved now in the rom i think it rom yeah uh but it says read only memory right can you write to read only memory we converted can con- con- convert it as in like maybe it gets uh, written and it can okay uh, uh that could be the thing so uh before i answer that question which i asked myself uh where was it saved 
till you saved it like it was in your computer right like it was in front of you um, so till you saved it was it not saved was it saved what was the status of uh, the presentation was it was it in a temporary storage like a cache or something was it what, what do you think swati darun ravi vaishnavi if you can type arun arun yeah it was stored in the ram during that time during the temporary phase yeah i i i i also agree so basically uh, the, the ram is a temporary storage like a cache uh, like where you can quickly s keep something but it is dependent on the power supply like the moment you remove power supply you lose all of that it's not permanently stored and then there is a more permanent kind of storage which is your uh, solid state devices or your hard disks i don't think it is called rom rom has a slightly different meaning uh, but uh, basically you have quick uh, uh, temporary storage called random access memory and then uh, uh, more permanent uh, let me just there's some noise in my background i'll just close the window so now meanwhile swati can you uh, right click your uh, can you show me uh, uh, how to check uh, how much ram you have and how much uh, space you have in your uh, uh, solid state device is there any way to do that yeah what, what's happening here I'm trying to search under. Mm -hmm. You go to your PC and if you go to this PC and uh, right click the like that this PC, you know that folder. Properties, properties. In in this PC, okay. it says install ram 16 gb there hmm. yeah so um the, the, so we know that at least there's a ram which is 16 gb in size in your computer how do we see your um, uh, permanent storage uh, how how big it is Hey, when you open that device manager, it showed something called disk drives. Is that going to help? You you had opened something at the bottom of this page. Ah, uh, in this. Disk drives. Ah, uh, what is that? so this is the uh, the actual device that you have uh, disk drive that you have and uh, that's the one which stores all your permanent uh, data right but uh, it's somehow you have only one of these disk drives a permanent one and you have another ram uh, for temporary storage but uh, the way you see it in your computer is as c drive d drive e drive f drive correct hmm. so uh, like darren said earlier uh, this device 
is for for various reasons partitioned or divided into multiple drives just to make uh, our lives easy in many ways and uh, you can see that uh, just close this window uh, close that as well uh, close so this one as well uh, because i'm not sure how to access it from here and like uh, judah is saying can you right click this pc on the left side and go to uh, go show more options and go to uh, manage uh, is it manage yeah try manage yes uh, c storage and under that disk management can you can you maximize this window see you can okay <laughs> you can talk also so uh, right now you are seeing uh, at the bottom how your uh, device is actually separated into different partitions and different drives and uh, you can see the total size is 476.92 gb and then there is uh, it's divided into one two three four five pieces uh, the first piece is 260 MB. The second piece, which has the label Windows and C, is 85.46 GB. And the th third piece is My Documents D on 95.31 GB. And then there is an extra E, something 95.31 GB. And then there's a large piece called, with no names, it's called finite, I mean, which has 590 MB size. And the same thing is shown as a table at the top. Right. So uh, when you are saving your file, it has to be saved. Uh, it, it goes into one of these drives, but then these drives are all on your device. So essentially they are finally going into your permanent uh, disk drive, uh, your permanent storage, which uh, in your case is uh, that name you saw earlier in the other uh, in, uh, can you click device manager at the on, on the left side? Uh, there is uh, yeah disk drives. Yeah, so your SK Hynix BC seven one one, that is your device drive, five hundred GB something hard disk, where uh, you are actually storing it. But then in your for your computer, it looks like. Uh, three different pieces and then we had two two small pieces at the beginning and end 200 MB 500 MB um, Your computer does use those for uh, various uh, use cases. So if you so see at the uh, top table It says healthy EFI system partition and healthy recovery partition so those partitions are used for some other functions like system use and recovery and then the other three are used for data and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the C drive in your case has some interesting uh, other uses. You can see boot, page file, crash dump, in addition to basic data partition, which means it, it doesn't just do uh, data storage, but it also does uh, loading your operating system, uh, the, the operating system files, uh, are all in this particular drive. So, um, in fact, uh, I was going to ask that as a question. Uh, you have all of these programs in your computer, right? Uh, can, can you uh, uh, can you go to this services and applications uh, thing on the left side? Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, this actually helps. But nevertheless. Uh, uh, can you just press the start button uh, start button uh, yeah so you have all of these programs right word excel edge powerpoint mail where, where are where are all these stored where, where in your computer where are all these stored i you think can all right the click or No, it's uh, speaks for the. Okay. No, I I was saying all the apps 
as well as I know are like in the C drive. Hmm. But where in C drive can you, you can show it in the C drive? An easy way of uh, double checking would be like to right uh, when you click on start and you open start, you can right click a given program and say open file location. And the users. Mm, where is PowerPoint in this? Swati, when you click on start, right, all of the programs come, right? Hmm. And now just try right clicking and then say open file location. So, so it's now, now these are all shortcuts. So can you see PowerPoint highlighted? So right click yeah. it again and say open, uh, now right click it again and say open file location. Uh, saying open file location again, yeah. So now it's opening under program files, Microsoft Office. Program. Program. Oh, yeah. So that's. Hmm. Makes sense. So, uh, so every uh, thing on your computer is actually on your disk, disk drive, right? Your permanent storage. It has to be somewhere in your permanent storage or it will not be there on your computer. Uh, that is something I wanted to say. Now, where did you save your, uh, uh, yeah, like program files? Uh, many folders are there in C drive where all of these are there. Where did you save your uh, file? In D drive. Yeah, yeah that, that is your file. Uh, can, yeah. can I request you to do one thing? Can you create a new folder and move it to that? Anywhere? You mean anywhere in the, any drive? Hello. Uh, I think your one of your PowerPoints is on. Just uh, save it and uh, close that sessions three if it's still on, and then just open a new folder anywhere, and just move the this uh, file into that folder. I think we've lost Akshay. Okay, hey, sorry, I, I got disconnected. Yes, thank you. Is my sound fine now? Uh, is there any problem? Yeah, was it too loud? <laughs> sorry. Uh, it is fine. Okay. So, uh, yeah, now my question now is going to be, uh, there is this file in your, uh, uh, folder you've created a name called purposeful programming can you have another file of the same name in this folder no uh, does everyone agree with swati uh, of the same if it's a different uh, file type then i can still have but EPT same name, I don't think I can. Now, what do you mean different file type? A Word document with the name session 3 will still be possible, I think. Uh, can you create a, a Word document here with a different, the same name? Now, 
Thanks. Uh, so, uh, can you create one more Word document with the same name? Mm, I don't think so. So, there's already a file with the same name in this location. So, it is not able to uh, uh, save the same name, but different types it's you're saying it can save. So, with how, how does the computer know this file is of a different type, the other file is of different type? File extensions. Yeah. What is a file extension? A file extension. What is it? It is a, essentially a suffix for uh, anything made with a particular application. So that application will have, uh, you know, um, data unique to that type of application. So I, 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 I would describe an application like this, like these office applications as offering a kind of template. And within that template, we can play around with it. But the data to that template is unique to that file extension, if that makes any sense, and if I'm not being in circular. Super. So I will ask this question in a different form, in a long-winded way. Shati, can you uh, close this window? Uh, open that Word document call session. We delete the third uh, new Microsoft Word document. Uh, open the session three Word document, add some text to it, and save it. Write something random and save it. Yeah, save and close. Okay, you put a nice emoji. Yeah, close that. So now we have two different uh, uh, file types according to uh, all of you. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is, uh, can you press a view button at the top? No, not view. View and uh, uh, show, go to show and say file name extensions. I mean, click on uh, check. Yeah, file names. Now, uh, did that change anything? What did you change? So, if we see the full quote unquote name of the file, the file extension is actually part of the name. So, we see docx and pptx. So, they so they technically have different names if we include the file extension okay Judah, i think you've got uh, what i was going to ask about so i will request you not to answer the next question uh, swati uh, can you rename that session three uh, just uh, click on that word file uh, yeah press uh, f2 or right click and uh, rename uh, Huh. Now uh, bring your cursor to the right huh. and then remove DOCX and make it PPTX. Don't press enter, just write PPTX and uh, you can all tell me what will happen when you do this because we know this is a file type word, the other one is a PowerPoint. Uh, so based on what you've just uh, I mean, based on your logic, you just tell me what will happen when you press enter. Will it get saved? Will it throw an error? Will it change the name? And Judah can't answer this. It'll change the name, but it'll also turn an error. Uh, what would there be? It'll change the name and it'll also turn an error because uh, it's basically changing the file extension. So. You're telling the system to read it in a certain way. So you're telling it to read it as a PPTX file once you change the extension. Okay, so till, uh, you're saying till you open it, you, you, there won't be an error, right? 
no i think i think when you the moment you change it and you press enter when you rename it itself that's when the error pops up okay so it, this is this error you're talking about it says if you change a file name extension the file might become unusable no the next one what, what will the next error say what what is error going to be that there is the same a file with the same name in this store, same folder Okay, uh, so I get uh, what you are saying. Is there anyone else who thinks differently? Because these are two different types of file, right? True. But... I mean, so we could have a separate. We could have a separate experiment where we just like type some some random thing, and without overwriting the name, we can just see if it converts to PPT, like or if it's unstable. Uh, okay, I didn't get what you said. Like we can just make a like instead of saying calling it session three, let's just call it like a one or something and type a one and see if it gets converted. What happens if it gets converted to PPT, like by itself without like overwriting a name or something like that? <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, be, we'll be fine. Um, uh, Swati, uh, can you press no and uh, change the name to something else dot pptx? I mean something else. Okay, good. Yeah. So you are changing the file extension. It's possible. It doesn't throw any other error, right? Uh, now the question was, uh, if you change it to session three dot pptx, what will happen? And Darren said uh, it will show another error that there is already a file. Can you open something else and see what what it says? Because it was initially a word. Now it was now it's PPT. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is that expecting? I mean, is that working as expected? Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe you can try uh, actually changing the name to session three and pressing enter. Let's see what happens. There, there are horrible people who are making lots of noise, so I'm just going to assume my sound is audible. Uh, this, uh, see, now it says there is already a file with the same name. So, uh, file extension is just a, a name, a trick with the name. It just uses the last dot whatever to call the file uh, something different. In Windows, it's a bit hidden. Uh, it, uh, we had to go to view and say uh, choose file extension, choose uh, I mean show show file name extensions to see that it was actually part of the file name. And uh, uh, but technically, uh, it, Windows only uses I and mean, it's not like it can use only the file name. It can indeed check what is the content inside it. Because PowerPoint also tried to open it and uh, de uh, decided that it is not uh, openable. So that uh, I just wanted to make it clear. Uh, did, did that make sense? Uh, I am sure Judah and Darren, you understood. Uh, Arun, uh, Ravi, Swati, uh, did it make sense what we just tried to do? Yeah, but it reminded me of some way, like many many years ago there were some files that i could actually just change the extension and make it into another form of file but uh, not definitely word word and powerpoint so are there any any kind types of files which can be read by different software hmm. so uh, can you yeah Darren, you want to say something yeah, yeah. So I actually use this trick. So if anyone wants to quickly extract uh, media content from PowerPoint files, you just rename the f uh, file to a zip file, like make a new copy of that original PowerPoint. You name rename it as a zip. And then when you open it as a zip, it just shows you all the different folders, like media will be a separate folder. And then you can directly export only the media content out. So if you just want pictures from the slide, it's a pretty neat hack. So I think zip is one format which you can convert PPTX to.
I mean, the trivial way, I think, would be something like P- PPT, PPTX, Doc, DocX. Uh, uh, Swati, uh, before you um, do that SIP conversion, let me uh, give you an easier one. Uh, you double click the session 3 and see how it opens. It opens as a PowerPoint. Now close this. Rename it to PPSX. Yes. Now open, now double click that. Ah. Okay, that didn't work. Sorry. Um. Okay, now <laughs> close, close that. Uh, press OK. And just uh, rename it to SIP. SIP is better than. Rename it to SIP. Or, or like just PPT instead of PPTX. Uh, uh, what? Instead of PPTX, just PPT. Huh. It, it would still open uh, with. Uh, but then PPSX would have opened it in a different way. But nevertheless. Uh, yeah, now, uh, like Darren was saying, we. Open it as a zip file, right? And uh, go to the media folder. See that image. That's your original image, right? Any guesses on what's happening here? Did you actually convert it into a zip file? Uh, no, we just changed the way the computer reads it or the program reads it. So can, uh, why can't we convert it into a DOCX file? DOCX file. You can, but not directly. Okay. Can you open the zip folder again? So, um, uh, we will come back to that uh, later. Now, uh, uh, yeah. Can I, can I turn on saying? Yes. Uh, the reason why we can't possibly convert one file format to another is because they use different applications which have different uh, uh, e coding and different interpretation of the data. So it would be meaningless in another file format unless there was, you know, a specific, like a, a another program to handhold the conversion. Hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I will, uh, I will come back to that point in a different way. Can you come back to the folders for the purposeful programming? Uh, and open that uh, something else or uh, can't make it back to or just keep it like that keep it pptx right click and open it with uh, uh, word so if the extension says powerpoint can you try opening it with uh, choose another app uh, more apps and choose word do you think it will work <laughs> It answered itself. It worked, right? What's happening? Uh, why did it work? Wait, wait, wait. Can you uh, just uh, trace your step back? Because I feel like I just missed that. Uh, like, what did you just do? So this is PowerPoint PPTX. As per it was originally a word file, right? Correct. And we renamed and it to .dx. Correct. So I think the data which was stored in, uh, you know, the original word document remains the same even if we change the uh, file format slash name. Correct. Does that, does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. 
so the name of the file uh, including the extension is separate from the content of the file and windows and many operating systems for that matter will use the file extension to guess the content of the file it is not that okay just because something is named dot pptx it doesn't mean that the content has to be in the powerpoint format and now what do we mean by these formats let's let's do one thing can you close this swati uh, can you open this in a notepad that uh, yeah something else dot pptx What is this? It does not it does not look like English actually. <laughs> it's the code mm -hmm. that go the is the code that goes behind the particular data, like the representation of right. data in code. Or like whatever information is there is actually translated, but this uh, this application Notepad cannot um, translate that information or process it in a, a high fidelity manner in which we expected in that application. So I suppose even if we were to convert this back into uh, Word, we would still get it back. But uh, the, we can't we can't process the information using this file. Using this application makes sense. So uh, uh, I, I will ask another question: What if the what if we have a file with no extension? What does that mean? Does it mean that file is meaningless? Can that file have content in it? It does have content in it. Uh, Swati, can I request you to do one thing? Uh, in that notepad, just uh, select everything, Control A and uh, Backspace and write uh, A, 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 B, C and save it. Or write just A and save it. Yeah, and close that. What would have happened to that file now? Uh, all the data is gone. Like its original data that was there is gone. Will it, will it open in uh, Word now? Maybe not. I think it might. Try, try opening with Word. What's happening now? Judah, you said it might. Why did you say it might? I think there's some sort of a hierarchy of applications in which like some of the lower end applications, we can uh, like Notepad, we can use to uh, process on Notepad as well as Word. But maybe like whatever we input in Word, we can only process in Word and other applications, but not Notepad. So maybe there's some sort of hierarchy at work here. Super, super. So uh, I will give the answer considering you only have 10 minutes. Um, the, the, all of these, um, um, everything eventually is stored in binary in the computer, right? Ones and zeros and ones and zeros in different arrangements. Like we last week, we, we made some code as to, okay, this particular uh, sequence of numbers means something like that so similarly uh, in computers also every sequence has some meaning uh, and different file formats have different meanings and the the reason why there are different different file formats is where you save it in different uh, layout different kind of uh, sequences in different ways it will uh, 
work better for certain applications and not so good for certain other applications. So a PowerPoint file is actually is actually just a zip file of the images. Uh, can can you open the zip file, Swati? The other one. Uh, see, it is a. Don't go to the PPT folder yet. So, what is the content of a PowerPoint file? It's a, a zip file with three folders and one content types dot XML file, and then within the PPT folder. Uh, there are media folder uh, and things like that slides the content of the slides and things like that and all of that in different 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 files it will store and then it will all link together probably I, I don't know exactly how it is stored but uh, uh, it will probably refer okay I want the f image in media uh, folder to be on this slide uh, I want this text on this third slide, something like that. And then it it is put together as one zip file. And then finally they change the name from zip to pptx. So that's the way a PowerPoint file is created. And when it is time to read that file, what the PowerPoint software will do is it will unzip that and then follow the steps back to get uh, the or uh, the the slides uh, in that format. So. Uh, it might be still a bit confusing to some of you. Some of you might have quick, uh, quickly got it. But uh, we'll do one more thing to see something very simple. Go to Purposeful Programming Swati and create a new text file. Just a new text document. Uh, just give it a name, simple.text. Yeah, and open that. It's opened in Notepad. Now, one thing about Notepad is, Notepad is a very low level uh, tool. So, it will open exactly what is on the uh, hard disk with uh, just one layer of, it, it converts from binary to text. That's all it will do. So, uh, just type A in it and save that. Save that, yeah, close. Now, A has been saved in that file called simple.txt, right? Now, if if we wanted to see how it is represented uh, on the hard disk, uh, we would have to know how, how, how do we represent A with binary, right, with ones and zeros. So, uh, that is a bit complicated. We might go into that encoding how do we represent text in zeros and ones uh, on a different day but for now we will just see that content uh, so just so that we can uh, finally see how it is actually stored on the hard disk so uh, Swati can you right click in an empty space uh, and choose open in terminal huh. now type uh, capital F format hyphen hex H capital H E X space and uh, what was the name simple no type uh, SI and press a tab tab button ah, now press enter so this is a uh, representation of how it is actually stored in your computer you can see uh, there's a number 41 and uh, a is written at the very end of it now uh, this right now it won't make sense but uh, can you come to the text editor not bad again Swati uh, keep this open come to the other tab uh, open that simple.txt add another a and save it and run that command again what's changed now has anything changed 41 is again uh, added 
Yeah, so uh, can can we make any guess about how A is stored in the computer? Uh, or let's do one more thing. Uh, Swati, can you add B, C, D and then save and uh, come back? Okay. Uh, if it's all, if it's, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, uh, that's be all caps, right? <laughs> can, can you put, uh, Swati, b before you put small letters, can you put uh, capital letters, B, C, D, and then maybe you can also put small letter B, C, D. Okay, you put a space also, smart. Let's see how space is saved. Good, so, save that. Now, now what do you see? Uh, could, uh, could she keep, uh, can she click on five more characters? I want to see what happens. Space is represented as 20. So basically capital A is encoded as 41. Space is encoded. Encoded as uh, 20, 42 is uh, encoded as capital B, capital C is 43, capital D is 44, and small b, c, d, or a, b, c, d was 61, 62, 63. So basically the capitals are encoded in relatively smaller numbers, and the smaller numbers are encoded in relatively higher numbers. Hmm. Smart. So, uh, so basically, uh, what we are seeing now is um, uh, text uh, written in uh, Unicode format, or uh, uh, I mean, encoded in Unicode format, uh, and uh, saved onto the computer. So, uh, when it actually is saved, uh, it will convert these numbers to binary numbers. This is now in decimal. Uh, we, we see them in decimal notation, but uh, when it's actually getting saved, it'll get saved as binary. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, and by binary, I mean zeros and ones. And therefore, uh, and that conversion into how from a number you can go to binary, I think Judah was planning to do some uh, session on that. But basically, there is a, uh, it's just a, Mathematics, just like we did yesterday um, uh, in our encoding, uh, uh, zero becomes zero, zero one, zero one becomes one, one zero becomes two, one one becomes three, like that it goes on. So and then this gets saved onto the actual computer. So this is a simple uh, uh, file, just directly without any extra encoding. It is directly taking uh, binary converting into a number and then converting it into a um, actual character letter. But when we save the same thing as a word document, it will probably get saved as a zip file and then uh, zip file has a larger, more complicated format or a PowerPoint also again, a larger, more complicated format. Uh, so this, uh, this session, uh, is kind of uh, what do I say like this uh, it is meant to be a bit disturbing and a bit unsettling with uh, not much of uh, clarity uh, but it will help later on I am hopeful because when we next go to binary it will connect to the previous session and also it will help uh, in the next uh, sessions when we build our own encodings with HTML or uh, our own uh, file formats, uh, this will help. So uh, I'm just gonna end this session here. I mean, from my side, uh, you, we can continue talking, um, but basically I hope uh, you you got 
some ideas about what we were trying to do this week. Is it too late to ask what is the significance of those uh, those other numbers that were not related to the coding of the characters specifically, like the zeros on the left and the one, two, three, zero, nine, a, and all of that? Uh, uh, no, they are just uh, references. Just like when you have in your Excel uh, uh, Excel uh, file, you have column numbers and uh, column names and uh, row numbers, right? So that uh, when you do format hex on a very large file you might be completely lost as to where you are so it's, it's just a reference system to understand which row and which column you are in uh, darren uh, it is possible to see the binary but there is no uh, i mean i couldn't find a program uh, <laughs> that comes by default you have uh, extensions for notepad plus uh, plus where you can directly see the binary uh, you can actually check uh, online and i mean i can send a couple of links also for uh, uh, files which will show i mean for uh, extensions which will oh actually i don't showed format hasn't been enough okay i i didn't know that command at all okay, okay. Can you try that, Swati, if you are not close to your computer? So, so actually, my other, like, the, the I reason don't I have access. Okay, fine. Uh, I think it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, fine. Uh, Darren, you were, you were saying something? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the reason I was asking this question is I was just wondering, like, uh, how does the computer know that, okay, like, when it's actually storing these signals in ones and zeros, like, is there some sort of a default program that the operating system has to keep converting this data constantly or it's like, uh, you know, I was just, that was a thought that occurred to me. That's one of the reasons why I asked, that's what I meant by, is there a default program for it? Like, is it a part of the operating system itself? Like, you know, something that's at the very base level, foundation level. Hmm. So, uh, so yes, that, that, is a very valid question how does uh, how does the operating system work how does it start like what happens after you press the power button how does it start reading the files on the uh, on the on the disk drive how does it load everything and then it, it, how does the whole thing run i think that is what it essentially boils down to uh, uh, i can give you a very quick answer uh, kernel the the Kernel, you can operating systems. Operating system typically is a word for the whole package. I mean, everything starting from the UI, the uh, screen savers, wallpapers, uh, including uh, the whole uh, thing. Uh, and operating systems contains one thing called kernel. A kernel is the most important file in an oper or program in an operating system, which does what you just asked about, which does this continuous. Uh, talking to the disk drive, talking to the RAM, talking to each other, talking to the internet, all of those kinds of activities. So we won't be able to talk about kernels in this discussion series, but you can read more about kernel, K-E-R-N-E-L. Uh, also, I mean, uh, I, I could you just double check like what I'm saying? Like I feel like Darren's question was basically how does a computer read uh, binary? But uh, like more broadly, like how will any given thing that you do on a computer, like any application you use, it fundamentally gets converted to binary. So is it true that uh, like each application will have a unique way of uh, coding whatever input we give into binary and that is unique for every program and not everybody will know like exactly how that conversion happens because it may be like some proprietary software or something but then once the once it gets converted to some you know low level of binary then the computer will uh, kind of take that 
and do some kind of machine level coding or you know some low level like the binary means we have to manipulate these circuits so and so like is that hmm. also like valid so uh, uh, juda uh, the answer is uh, a bit uh, convention over um, uh, so actually let me show this uh, can, can you see my screen Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna show the binary of that simple dot. So this is a simple dot txt. It, it just has a, a, b, c, d, and this is the binary. I mean, uh, this, because this is Linux, I have this tool called xxd. Um, so it's storing it as zero one zero zero. So this is probably the binary of forty. What was it? Forty. Forty one. So I'm just gonna. Is it forty one or sixty something? Yeah, it was forty one. Forty one. Okay. Um, okay. It, it, it's converting to sixty five in my case. Uh, okay. I am not sharing all my screens, right? Uh, there are only five alphabets here, but six sets of binary. Uh, is that true? Uh, let me open uh, simple dot txt. Uh, let me just write a. Then let's see what. Uh, okay, so I think in Linux it's stored in a different form. It's not stored exactly as it is stored in Windows. So I think this particular uh, so it it did store it as a forty one. So I am now calling it as a xdem, and it says forty one. Mm. So uh, yeah, so I mean I'm not prepared to go into this depth today, but basically uh, what we do have is it it does go to binary eventually. And Darren, you're I mean uh, Judah, you were asking uh, can different comp different software have different uh, representations? It is possible. Uh, I can represent uh, in my own proprietary ways. Like we had a uh, developed a convention last week, right? We could uh, write software which will read um, binary as uh, as per that protocol, as per that format. But uh, typically, uh, almost every uh, computer program will try to use this uh, format called Unicode uh, for uh, making sure that files are able to. Um, you know, be used on different different devices and uh, use a standard that helps everyone. So you can then use my software in your software, and I can use parts of your software in my software. So that is allowed if we all switch, uh, stick to the same protocol. So that is called Unicode. That's what typically uh, everyone uses. We just just like clarification. I didn't mean like a different convention of binary. I meant like different applications have like different. Like I, I was referring to higher level coding and lower level coding. Like some applications will use higher, but it finally it ultimately comes down to machine level coding. Like everything gets. Mm, yes. So at machine level, it's all uh, binary. So what we just saw. One zeros. Uh, I unless I am encrypting my whole uh, disk, 
it will store it will be stored on the disk exactly as those sequence of ones and zeros and that is how uh, typically forensic experts when they recover files from the computer uh, of you know terrorists or if you want to uh, re, re uh, uh, you know recover files that have been deleted and all that we are able to do that because uh, it will be stored in exactly this format unless someone has encrypted their whole disk in which case there's another level of uh, like uh, Darren was asking this is software which will uh, bef just before it gets saved it will uh, you know garble the those uh, binary and convert it into an encrypted form and then uh, only that software can re, -crypt, uh, re I mean decrypt that. So Swati, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> uh, Unicode, yeah, it is more important um, that we use Unicode when we are using characters more than uh, what we have in the standard uh, uh, English, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, all of that. Uh, with, with just English, so in the past when computers were uh, just becoming, uh, you know, used and mostly it was Americans and Europeans. They would just use English and they had a smaller encoding scheme which used, uh, uh, which, which could only support uh, just the first, uh, I mean, just the English characters and a few more characters. But then uh, Unicode allows uh, language in uh, all kinds of uh, uh, communications and Unicode also is a uh, it, it includes that previous format or previous encoding. Uh, I, I'm not gonna talk more now because we haven't looked at encoding as such. But essentially, uh, uh, the previous encoding also is included in Unicode, and therefore we can just call it Unicode. But if you if you are really interested, you can check out something called ASCII. Uh, which I put in chat. And uh, there could be one more complication. It, that 41 we saw was probably not a decimal 41. It could have been a hexadecimal 41. <laughs> and uh, that's probably why uh, the binary representation was pointing to decimal 65. Um, but luckily, we didn't see any hexadecimal character. Luckily or unfortunately, we didn't see any hexadecimal character in that hex dump. And therefore, we uh, couldn't uh, uh, spot that. Uh, Swati, do you still have the computer? Do you want to try adding a E, I mean F for G to that and see if uh, it produces a different character. By the way, uh, please feel free to leave if you are um, I am out of time.
more characters we need might if my guess is right uh, we will see some hex hex characters yeah see see what's happened now try small small letters hmm but it's already there i mean uh by the way z h see the character of h yeah Forty-eight, forty-nine, and after forty-nine, you can see a four a for b for c. So this is actually not decimal forty-one; it's hexadecimal forty-one on a sixteen-digit uh, number system, and uh, that that therefore the binary of that. I mean, in decimal, it is sixty-five, and the binary is. Uh, One zero zero one zero 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 something something like that. Uh, anyhow, uh, I just wanted to tell that because um, I mean I just want to tell that because I was wrong. Uh, it's not forty one. We should only call it hex four one because forty one is decimal forty one. This is hex four one for for a for b for c. Decimal number sixty-five for that matter. A capital A. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Sh shall we end this session? Yeah. Thanks. It was a good session. Good night. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Ending Bye. in three.